Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and usually the Phoenix framework as well by building things. Today is episode number three of a Phoenix Trello clone series. So we're cloning Trello using Phoenix. As you can see, Trello's got a fair amount going on on the front end. Our app has nothing going on on the front end. So this episode, we're going to add Vue.js and fix that. The first two episodes, we focus pretty much just on building the skeleton of the app. We used generators and made some associations between things that should have them, such as each card having many comments and many activities and belonging to a list and a user. And after doing that, we had some tests to fix and went through fixing all those generated tests. Uh, just a quick reminder, this series is mostly about testing, but we've obviously got to build something to test. So we're building Trello. Now, the first thing we're going to do building Trello is bring in some more dependencies on the front end. Right now, we're in the base directory of our Phoenix app, and we're going to go to our assets directory, which is where all the front end stuff lives. Since I've decided to use Yarn for this project, First thing I'll do is remove the package lock so we don't have two. And then we'll yarn add these dependencies and these dev dependencies. So yarn add view, view template compiler, and view draggable so that we can get that drag and drop action that we just saw Trello has. So will take a moment to install, so I'll pause the video. Then we'll add the dev dependencies. So that's yarn add dash dash dev. See, actually we've got the CSS loader, node sass, sass loader. Uh, and this is just for the CSS preprocessor that I've chosen to use. View loader and view style loader. Once again, I'll pause. That's done. Let's have a look at our package JSON. We'll bump the version of our CSS loader, and then we should be good to go. So save that and yarn install, or just yarn. Then we need to go to our Webpack config and make some adjustments so that we can use Vue. So first thing we'll do is const view loader plugin equals require view loader. We'll add a rule for that right after our JavaScript rule. So we'll match anything with a view extension. Let's get the regex right there. Let's see, terminates dollar and yeah, it looks just like the others. And then we'll make our loader view loader. Then we'll make our next line match anything with CSS or SCSS extensions. So that S question mark makes it optional. And we need to run this through two plugins. We need the CSS loader and we need the SAS loader. The SAS loader is going to be applied first since I put it later in the array. And down in our plugins, we need to add one for view. So new view loader plugin. We need another comma up here. And then finally, we need a resolve section. So resolve. Anything with view to view slash dist slash view dot esm dot js. That's just where the file is put. And we'll add extensions. For now, it's going to take js dot view and finally dot json. And that should be good to go, although one can never tell with these things. 
So let's update our app.js and first test the SCSS and then we'll test view. So uh, phoenix.css is not going to change. App.css we're going to rename to app.scss and our webpack setup should use this app.scss in our assets directory to generate the appropriate app.css in our priv directory, which is where the uh, assets get get uh, output to. Now, next step is app.js. It's pretty empty here. We're going to get our CSS from app.scss. We're also going to import view at the very top. So import view from view should be available. Thanks for webpack setup. And then we'll stick view on the window so that it's easy to access from our terminal. So window.view equals view. Save that. And in our app.scss file, let's just add something really simple so that we know that we're on the right track. We'll make an scss variable, call it some color. We'll set that to uh, papaya whip just because. Then the body will set the background to some color. So background some color. If everything's set up correctly, we should be able to see the body update its color. So ix-s mix phoenix.server. We've got to be in the correct directory though. So ix-s mix phoenix.server and reload it exactly what we wanted. We should also have hot loading working out of the box, so we'll try uh, turquoise, see if that works. Yep, excellent. Hail turquoise, I believe is one as well. All right, so all that is good. Let's go back to PyoWit, save that. And the next step is to make sure that view is there. We have view. We do, once the document loads, all right. So in our app.js, we're going to import our view app that we haven't written yet. Uh, that's gonna be from app.view. And then we're going to wait for the document to load and put that app on the document. Document.addEventListener DOM content loaded. That's going to be, we'll look for an element with an ID of boards. So document query selector boards. And then let's set that on the window as well. We'll probably remove this line later. Window.l equals L. If the element is not undefined or null, then const app equals a new view component. That is too much information VS Code. L is going to be the L we created. Data is going to be lists json.parse l dot data set dot lists so that way we can set the lists in the html data of that element and uh, view will have access to all of them and template is just going to be app lists equals lists And components are just going to be app, and that's it. Our app.view file is going to be pretty straightforward. At the top of our view app, we'll have a template. Inside of that, we'll have a single div with the idea of app. Then we'll have a div that's a v4 that loops over all the lists we passed in. And each of those lists will have, for now, let's just give them the name or the title, and that's it. So for h1 here is going to be whatever the name of the list is. So list.name. And this div 
is going to be a V4, which just loops over the list. So it looks kind of like a, a list comprehension. List in lists, vbind key, which we have to set, is going to be list.id because we know that's going to be unique. That's pretty much it for our template. Then we'll add a script. The script will export default props lists. The next question is where will we show all the lists? Since I already decided in the first episode to only have one board, I think it makes sense just to go to the root of the app. So we'll just have all of our stuff there. And of course, if you were to extend the app and build out more boards, then you just uh, add a, another route for boards. So let's go to our, our main page. So that's gonna be in page index.html.eex. And we're just going to get rid of almost everything. Let's see, do we want the article? Yeah, we'll keep the article. We'll keep that as class column. Uh, we'll have a section with an ID of boards, and then everything else will pretty much get replaced when we, we mount the view app. Just leave one article in there as we see. Then we can add a data attribute to pass the lists into view. So we'll just say data lists. And for now, just to test it, we'll use uh, just some fake data here. So. Our first list is going to be name list one. And we're not going to give it a position or anything else. And then our next one will be name other list. And then close the array. And we should see something pop up. Very good. List one, other list. So we've got view mounted and all of that's working. Let me just move this down here so it's a little easier to see everything. Now the next step is to actually get the data we want out of the database instead of just feeding view dummy data. So let's start by using some of those generators we made last episode and the one before. So we'll go to users and we'll create a new user. This one is just gonna be called uh, somebody. And then we'll create a new list. Make a new list. Oh, they only have name on them. Let's, uh, let's go back to our schema for lists. So lists also have positions, which we added later. So that's not in the form. They also belong to a user. So we'll go to list form and we'll remedy that problem. So we've got a name and then we've also got a position. The position is not a text input, it's a number input. And then we have a user ID, which we'll also just use a number input for. So position user ID. And with that, we should be able to create a list. Our first list will be called ideas. And we're not going to fill in a position, that'll just be Something we'll update later if the user changes it. And user ID, that just says, yeah, user, user ID is displayed as user. User ID, there we go, user ID is one. Okay, go back, that's all we need for now. So let's go back to our main page, see about how we can get that list. Well, this is the main index. This is handled by the page controller. So let's go up to that page controller. We need to get our lists, which are inside of task. So alias mellowweb.task. And then inside of this index, we'll get our lists. So lists equal task.list lists. And then we're going to pass those into the render. So lists is lists. So now we're passing it to the index and then in our index.html, let's just make sure we've got the lists. So we'll, we'll just 
inspect lists. Lists aren't available. They they should be though. Let's have a look at that controller again. Oh, should be mellow.task. That was a bad autocomplete. Alright, so mellow.task, task that list lists. Should be good there. Sign lists is not available. Probably have to restart the server since we made a change there. All right. And that was actually the very worst place I could have put this inspect because it's just getting it's just getting replaced by what view mounts. Okay, so we do have a list. Now notice we've got a bunch of metadata in here because we, that's just what we got out of Ecto. So we can't actually render this as JSON. I'll show you an example here. If we say poison was the old JSON encoder, now uh, Phoenix 1.4 and later uses JSON. So if we were to say json.encode lists, we're gonna get an error. And that's because this is not JSON. We need to get rid of that meta information there. Fortunately, there's a very easy way to do that in Phoenix. Let's go to our list. There's already a protocol that's been written to help us do exactly this. So derive json.encoder, or if you're using poison, poison.encoder works the exact same way in this case. Only, so the, we're specifying the only fields we want encoded are name, position, and user ID. Notably, we're not going to be encoding any of this metadata related to the struct itself or to Ecto associations that are or are not loaded. So we're not doing anything with the belongs to, we're just getting the user ID. With that saved, we should be able to reload our app. And there we go. So name, ideas, position, null, user ID one. Okay, great. So how do we use it? All we need to do is get rid of this inspect and then take this block and replace our dummy data with it. And we now have our list, which was coming from our database on the page. We'll make another list. So ideas and next one will be to do. Position we're not gonna set, still owned by the same user. And let's go back to our boards and we see both of them there. It doesn't look much like Trello yet, but now that we've got view set up, it's powered by the database, we have SCSS set up, it's going to be much, much faster going from here on out. And next episode, we're going to make it start looking like Trello. Till then, code on.